Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop on a not quite so cold, but still cold day outside. Not bone chilling. And uh, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting the uh, record player and uh, stereo, everything back into the cabinet. I'm going to mount the speaker properly in the cabinet. The rest I'm just going to lay in the bottom of the cabinet temporarily. Wire everything up. The record player is already in there. And uh, we're going to test it out and for two things. One is, uh, is there a hum, a distinguishable hum in the speaker? Once the speaker is back in the cabinet, we should be able to find out. And secondly, is there enough volume coming out of this uh, receiver? There are three weak tubes, all of them in the audio string for playing a record. And so there's a chance that uh, the volume just isn't going to be that, isn't going to be good enough. And we're going to have to change a few tubes in there. I've also got rid of the very, very long audio cord in favor of this uh, much higher quality, shorter cord. I'll be using that to feed the phono from the record player over to the amplifier. Okay, when I get all that set up, we'll see what happens. So just a little bit on the uh, light bulbs. These are the two bulbs that came in the unit. One is a 44, and the other one just says 6 to 8 volts. Oh no, it says 40. Looks like it says 44 also. So these are both working, but I looked I looked on the schematic, and the schematic is calling for a 44. Now a lot of radios have 47s in them. 44s are brighter bulbs. They're quarter amp bulbs. Uh, one and a half watt bulbs, I believe. Whereas a 47, which is what you would tend to stick in a radio like this automatically without really checking, is uh, 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 not quite half the power. Uh, it's a little more than half half the uh, current. Uh, they're not nearly as bright though. So, so we're going to put in a couple of brand new 44s. Just, just another thing I thought of. I also took a moment to examine the uh, string on the back here, and the string is in excellent shape. In fact, I take a wild guess that uh, Grandpa changed the string on this uh, back when he was working on it. Can't be sure about that, but it shows no sign of wear. So it's not going to break for a long time. Okay, so I managed to cobble everything into the back of the uh, console there. You can see the receiver just sitting on a stand, but everything else is in its proper place. Just the receiver is not bolted up yet because if, it, if I discover the hum is, there is a hum and it's you know, su substantial, I'll have to do a little more work on that receiver. Okay, so I do have a microphone positioned in front of the speaker. Let's see if I can show you that. So you can see the microphone there. First thing we're going to do is make sure that microphone's working. Let me just switch over to it. Okay. Sure. Sure. It's a little, little far from me to, to hear my voice, but uh, that should pick up the sound nicely. Okay. I think we're ready here. Um, Got to plug it in. So every, let me just double check. Plugged in. Connected up. Power's plugged into this. Radio, big radio plug is plugged in. This one here. Antenna's connected. Audio cord's in place. Everything, but it's not actually plugged into power yet. So let's do that. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to start it up here, it's not, the power's not on yet. I'm just going to turn the switch on it, and I'm going to turn on the uh, dim bulb here just for safety's sake. All looks good. Okay, we'll switch to the other microphone now. If you notice the uh, lights got brighter slowly, that was me turning up the voltage supply. 
Okay, so I hear a bit of a hum. Now, that's through the headphones here. Before we go any further, I'm going to just listen with my own ears and check this out. Well, using my own ears, I don't hear any hum whatsoever. So exactly what we're hearing hum-wise, I'm not sure. Put my headphones back on. Okay, so we're going to play the radio to start with. The antenna is in the orientation it is in. May not be the best orientation. Switch needs some cleaning. Comme une province, parce que l'histoire en 1988, le prince de Kiev a été a adhéré à l'orthodoxie, et c'est là que la religion orthodoxe russe est née. Donc il y a toute une épaisseur ici historique, religieuse et culturelle. Mais je parlais dernièrement à une amie. Okay, well, I think that's very good. So the next thing we're going to try, we're going to try playing a, a record with it. I have to shuffle a couple things around here first. Okay, I think we're ready to try it out. Now this might be a little awkward for me because I'm far away from my audio controls and stuff. Um, so the volume may not be well maintained on the video. But uh, here we go. We're going to play Atomic Rooster again. Okay, so I'm turning the volume up and down, of course, to avoid the uh, copyright hit problem I might have. Uh, volume is pretty good. I turned it right up full there. Uh, it's probably overloading on the video. Uh, the volume is actually coming out pretty good. Would it be stronger if we put other tubes in there? Probably. Um, how about the sound quality? The sound quality is excellent. That's how it looks to me. Uh, let me play just a little more here. Okay, a little bit of 
the distortion that the volume turned right up full. Well, that's not too surprising. So the uh, the output tube itself is fairly weak. Maybe we'll try a different output tube to start with, and we'll see we'll see if that uh, boosts it up. Very hard to do this objectively with sound volume, but uh, basically it's working great. That, that's really what I could say at this point. Okay, so I'm going to find myself a good six V six output tube. I'm going to pop it in there and uh, and see if it does make a volume difference. Perfect. 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 Okay, so I have a new 6V6 or uh, almost new, uh, tests like new. So it's much stronger than the one that was in there. We're going to find out if it's louder. Now, very hard for me to do this on video in an objective way, but I'm here in the room with my own ears. So I'll certainly know the difference. Now, I've turned down the microphone a little bit, moved it a little further away to try not to overload it, but I really can't pay too close attention to that during this test. Uh, it's going to get pretty loud, I would imagine. Just letting things warm up here a little bit. Now you see that the record is down. It's not up, it's not up ready to be dropped. It's down on the platter. I'm going to push the auto button. You can see the overarm is swung out of the way, so the record player will think there's records to drop, so it will go ahead and try to play it. Because the record is not dropping, it won't detect that it's a 12 inch record. And it's probably going to start playing it at the 10 inch point. Not quite sure. I haven't tested this before. So we'll just see what happens. And here we go. So, so tempted to leave that playing because I, I just love this record. Um, well, the result is, yes, it's much louder. Uh, it's definitely working, working harder, no doubt about it. Uh, definitely produces party level volume without going all the way to the top of the volume control. So, so changing that tube didn't make a difference. Now there's two more tubes in there that are a little weak. Um, so I could try changing those two. We could do them one at a time and see what each one does. Um, okay, let's do that. The next one I'm going to change out is the uh, uh, 6SQ7-2. Okay. Okay, so this, this tube uh, is involved with the radio operation. It's the detector tube for the radio and then it's the uh, first let, let's call it the audio driver for the audio output tube. So uh, we're going to Fire up the set here again. There we go. Give it a moment, then we're going to play the radio and then we'll try a record. Um, perceive it to be louder? I'm not sure. Okay, let's give it a go. Okay, so our radio sounds the same. Over the record player. Get the record player going here.
Whoops. There we go. Beat it. Pretty loud. I can't. I can't say I can hear a difference. It's very hard to compare volume this way. Um, so I was once told that that we have a seven-second audio memory. That after seven seconds, we cannot um, remember what it is we just heard. So when you're comparing things, shit, I wonder what that clicking is. When you when you're comparing sound, it's very tricky. And there's a lot of uh, psychoacoustic effects with uh, with sound. Okay, so that's great. Now there's one more too. That's a six SC7, I believe. That's the preamp for the cartridge, which uh, tested uh, kind of towards the end of its life. It, it's a two-part two. It tested kind of towards the end of its life, uh, and uh, the other half tested weak. So. Why don't, why don't we try? We'll, I, I've got one here. Well, let's give it a try. Okay, so I've got a couple of possible replacements here, but they do need to be tested to prove they're good. All I know is these work. That's as much testing as I've done on them. They work enough. Now, are they good, though? So let's just double check here. 6 SC7. 6 SC7. Is that really the right tube? For here, <laughs> make, make absolutely sure. Six SC7, yeah. dual triode tube, 6.3 volts, signal level 2, 20 L, 235 GP, 235 GP, 1760, 1760, 45. Ooh, F. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. Okay, for shorts. This tube, to be good, has to come up past 880. 880 is about here. Okay, so we're, we're quite a bit above. That's, that's better than the other two. And now the other half of this one. P1, G, G. Here we go. These two switches. Here we go. Much better. Much better. Okay, that's all we need to do. I think this tube is quite satisfactory. Very good. Stick that in the radio here. Believe. I believe I'm not sure which tube it is. Which tube is it? It's the line of three on the inside. Line of three on the insides, this one here. Come on. Wow. Oh, smokes is really hanging on there. Six SC seven. That tube is mounted on a rubber, a rubber, I didn't really talk about this before, but it's mounted on a rubber mount. It's a little bit wiggly, if you like, to isolate it from the chassis. Uh, probably because of mechanical vibrations in the tube 
is enough to cause the internal tube elements to also mechanically vibrate. And with the great amplification that's coming from this tube, a little bit of vibration is going to come through. So I think that's why they've uh, isolated it there like that. Okay, here we go. Let's power it up. This tube only affects the record player. So we're just going to check the record player. Let me cut some microphones out here. Okay, let's we'll switch over to this camera. That's full volume with nothing happened. Just a bit of hiss. But what I want to demonstrate is the rumble. Now it's a little tricky. I'm just going to turn this to manual here, get it turning. I'm going to not demonstrate the rumble, but find out how much rumble. Now this is sitting in the rest arm. The needle is actually floating in space, so this isn't a very good test to start. But let's just see how much, how much, what do we hear now when I turn it right up? A little bit of rumble, a little wee bit. Now, the rest of the time, there's music on the record, so you, you'll never, never, ever, ever hear that rumble. I had the volume right up full. Probably the tube I put in there is going to boost the sound level a little more too. Let's see, there we go, once again. In hearing of Atomic Rooster, I couldn't swear it was any louder than before. Um, it, it's plenty loud, doesn't sound too much different to me. Uh, but then I'm you know, just doing this with my ears and I explain how difficult this really is to be objective. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going, now the, the reason I'm not dealing with that clicking by the way is it's just another opportunity for me to mess up the record player. Pretty sure the record player is going to operate, even though, oops, even though it's going to do that that sound. Let let let's take it right to the end here. Let it turn itself off. So I really don't want to investigate it for fear of, of ending up making a mess of things. So we're in good shape now. I don't think the clicking is that. It's annoying, but I don't think it's. Like, I don't think it's a big deal. Fantastic. Okay, so what I'm going to do. I think, I think this is probably the very end of uh, this. Uh, incidentally, if you can close it with a record playing, but never with the needle on. But if you if you hit automatic and then closed it uh, before the needle gets on the record, um, bingo. It's very smooth. It's a very smooth action. I, I lubricated it a bit. But you still run the risk of making the needle jump around in that. Secret place for records. Just wonderful. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to call the. Uh, I think I'm going to say this. This video series is over. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a higher. I'm going to get a what's called a half-speed master. I'm going to play that record on this player and, and record it uh, for YouTube. But I, I won't uh, worry about a copyright hit on it. Well, we'll see what a really nice record sounds like on here. Um, great. So thanks a lot for watching the series. And if you like, I think it's Carol King. If I can find that record, that's what I'm going to play to, to really give this guy a, a, a full test. So thanks a lot for watching the series. And uh, wonder what's next.